I would like, if I may, and I may because it's my show, to quickly address something I forgot to bring up uh, when discussing yesterday's movie, Metropolis. And that is the uh, costume of the lead character, the, uh, the male lead. He is the son of the man who built Metropolis, and he's a rich kid who just idles time away in the pleasure gardens while the working class toil to make sure the city runs right. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, you do have to look around the lenses, the modern lenses, to appreciate the film. But if you don't, you're going to laugh at this guy's outfit. He's wearing a um, long sleeve button up dress shirt. I don't know if a bird just flew into my window or what. Um, it's described in the movie as silk, so a, a nice dress shirt uh, with a tie that's tucked into what can only be described as MC Hammer shorts. You remember Hammer pants? Yeah, same thing. These are shorts. With knee-high socks and loafers. I'm sure he looked really spiffy back in the 20s, but from to my modern eyes, he looks really silly, and it is pretty funny. Then again, this is how I dress, so what do I know? Anyway, as you can probably tell from my voice, I'm not 100%. I'm still a bit under the weather. Um, very congested. Hard to breathe through my nose. Got a major headache. So, today's movie, Contagion. Or at least it would be if it were on Netflix, which it's not. I, I thought that would be kind of funny. Um, so instead, I'm going to watch a movie called Contracted. It's, um, from what I can tell, about a woman who picks up what she thinks is a uh, STD from a one-night stand. But then her bits start dropping off. I'm, I'm guessing, you know, her ear falls off and then her hair falls out and her skin goes ashen. I've never seen a trailer for this movie. I, I think one of the horror bloggers I read, maybe Brian Collins or someone, uh, recommended this. Because I remember someone talking about this and saying it was pretty good. So, um, since I feel terrible, I'm going to watch someone else feeling worse, and hopefully that will make me feel better about my current situation. Let's see. I'm going to guess that this is the type of movie where she dies at the end. She ends up in a little melty puddle. Or she ends up a little melty puddle. Fizz fizz. Let's see if I'm right. Well, at least it's short. I didn't like it. Didn't like it much at all. I guess I will, for the sake of positivity, say some nice things. The performances are roundly fine. The makeup is pretty good. Uh, the movie has uh, uses a title card system, uh, so after she uh, gets infected or contracted, um, the title card appears day one, and it goes on like that throughout the movie, day two, and um, the movie does something very unexpected and very cool with one of the title cards that I won't spoil. I don't know why. I'm probably going to spoil everything else because I don't recommend the movie. I didn't think it was that good. I'm going to spoil it. Yeah, full spoilers. Um, so, day one, day two. The day three card title card comes up. It goes day three of three. I like that. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Trying very hard not to cough and snort and 
snuffle. Um, problems with the movie. I don't like any of the characters. Uh, really, all the characters in this movie are just kind of lousy people. So, I don't even know what her name is. Uh, the Our lead person is a uh, apparently a recovering drug addict, has had some addict has had some problems with drugs in the past, has uh, moved in with her mom, who uh, is a bit of a homophobe. Um, she's in a relationship with um, another woman, which makes having a homophobic mother that you're living with really difficult, I would imagine. Uh, her girlfriend is stringing her along, obviously, long past lost interest in her. Stringing people along is not cool. Uh, her best friend uh, has a crush on her and is just waiting for them to break up so she can uh, step in. Not bad in, of, in and of itself, but she's also an enabler and she brings her to a party and damn near force feeds her drinks. Which is not a very friendly thing to do if you Know that your friend is finally off the wagon, on the wagon, whichever one's the good one, you know, is, is clean and sober. Um, she has a male admirer, if you were to be um, polite. If you were to re be realistic, you would call him a stalking asshole who needs to take a hint and leave her the hell alone. Um... I mean, he doesn't, yeah, he's a stalking asshole that needs to take her, take a hint and leave her the hell alone. Ugh, creepy guy. Um, so, uh, she meets up with a guy at the party who, uh, roofies and rapes her, and... This guy is shown at the beginning of the movie to be canoodling a corpse in a morgue, I guess. I suppose that's where he picked it up and then passed it to her. So she right wakes up the next day with a hell of a hangover. And, um... Uh... Let's see. Uh... What's the first thing that happens? Oh, uh, you know, she's, you know, her underwear is all bloody and she's sitting in a bloody puddle. And she's thinking, well, golly gosh, that's, that's a bit more than I usually menstruate. Off into the shower and, you know, she looks at her abdomen and she's got, uh, you know, dark blue spidery veins uh, emanating from her crotch. That doesn't look good. So she gets in a shower and starts scrubbing and, more and more blood keeps coming down. It's at this point you think you might go to the doctor, but no. Um, so throughout the movie, uh, her eyes get all bloodshot. One completely cakes over. Her hair falls out. Her teeth come out. Her fingernails fall off. Uh, she's got a humongous sore on the side of her face. Um, she has worms dripping out of her crotch. Yeah, she's a mess. She's falling apart. And it takes her a lot longer than I think it would take most people to go to the damned hospital for crying out loud, lady. Um, she does go to a doctor, but it looks like she's seeing a, a, a private physician. It's like, man, call 911 at some point. Go to the emergency room for crying out loud. Um, so, let's see. Um, this movie's just not very good. And, uh, so... She goes to her former drug dealer's house to get some heroin or snorty cocaine stuff. 
And um, all the while she has heard that, well, there's this guy, BJ, that the police are looking for. And so, oh my gosh, that's the guy I slept with. Does she ever tell the police? No. Does she ever bring that up in the hospital, in the doctor's office? No. Does she really make any effort to do anything about it? No. I mean, even as a completely selfish character, which makes her somewhat unlikable, um, rather unlikable, actually, you would think for self-preservation reasons, it'd be like, wow, th this guy may be the key to my bits not falling off. Maybe I should follow up with this. No. No, she goes and snorts something at her drug dealer friend's place. Then she um, goes to her girlfriend's house, and her girlfriend says, bugger off, because you, you aren't taking the hints, so do bugger off. So she um, kicks the front door down, which knocks her girlfriend for a loop. And then she uh, strangles her to death. Okay. It is um, the most unconvincing, unconvincing strangulation scene I have possibly ever seen. Her uh, friend who's into her and was waiting for her to break up and is enabling her with alcohol when she really sh shouldn't, um, she called her girl girlfriend in advance and told her that she had slept with the guy that had raped her at the beginning of the movie. And that was why her girlfriend kicked her out, which is kind of a crap thing to, to do. So she goes over to her, girlfriend's ha to her um, best friend's house, who's pining for her. And she says, here I am. I'm all alone now. This is what you want, isn't it? And her friend's like, uh, dude, did, 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 did you just kill your girlfriend? Is that why you're single? And despite, you know, humongous sore and veins crawling all over her neck and being white as a sheet and, you know, big gooey eyeball, they play kissy face for a little bit. And then our lead uh, beats her over the head with a... Uh, oh, no, no, no. She uh, tackles her to the floor and then bites a chunk out of her neck. Because, you know, she's going to call the police and she's already killed her girlfriend. So she tears a chunk out of her throat and I'm thinking, oh... So, zombie? Yeah, it doesn't really eat her, just bites a chunk out of her throat. Then, um, grabs a, a pestle, a you know, mortar and pestle, and beats her over the head with it. And kills her. Then cleans it up as best she can, drags the friend into the bathroom, and then calls the stalker guy. And does makeup to cover up stuff as best she can, and puts the hair over her face and, you know, angles herself so he can't really see how gooey her face is getting and cajoles him into having sex with her. Which, as, I really like you, I really care for you, I didn't take much cajoling. Seems to me this guy just really had a hard-on for her and really cared little about anything else. Ah, the lengths to which some men will go. Some of us are truly despicable, are we not? So anyway, um... He's doing his thrusting thing. And little worms are falling out on the floor between them. And he says, oh, it tingles. Now the shampoo... That's supposed to tingle. That's how you know it's working. Sex? Not, not supposed to tingle. Nope. Unless you have shampooed your pubic hair, then I guess it's supposed to tingle. Um, 
Oh, and he also says, oh, you're so wet. <laughs> I'm awesome. Nah, she's a big bloody mess. Eventually, he's like, okay, now there's something moving down here. What the hell? Oh my gosh, there's worms and blood. You horrible person. And he goes to the bathroom to clean up. And he sees the dead friend. And she leaves and gets in a car and calls her mom. And then faints at the wheel and gets in a car accident. And then she gets out and she seems to be full zombie. You know, she's she's almost doing the whole Robot Maria thing from uh, Metropolis. Uh, she's swiping at people and the cops are there and her mom's there. And she lunges at her mom and the screen cuts to black and the credits roll. I did not like this movie. I think the general premise is fine. I think... Therefore I am. No, um... I really hate being down on movies, but... Oh, I'm looking at it as a one-star rating. I, I guess I'm not alone on that. Um... Yeah. I just, I, really my biggest problem with the movie is I didn't like anyone in it. I didn't like her. So, a lot of her decisions don't make any sense. Um, man, I mean, to, I, she does go to the doctor's office, but man, your bits are falling off. Call 911. Go to, really. So, um. I'm I'm stalling. I'm I'm I, I want to say something, something, but I I've, I've really got nothing on this. It's just not a very good movie, in my most humble of humble opinions. Ah uh, well, uh, better luck tomorrow. See you then.